Typically, people with Asperger's syndrome may not understand conventional social roles or make eye contact with other people, and they may seem unable to understand sarcasm. Sarcasm? <laughs> Asperger's has become more in the spotlight over time, and especially lately, since Elon Musk, the owner of SpaceX and Tesla, admitted he has Asperger's syndrome while hosting Saturday Night Live in May 2021. I'm actually making history tonight as the first person with Asperger's to host SNL. But Asperger's itself is far from being a new thing. Most advocates don't know who discovered it and the impact that the pioneer had in the lives of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. That is why in this video, we bring you the story of Hans Asperger and tell you how he contributed to making this world a more accessible place for people with Asperger's syndrome. What is Asperger's? Before diving into the past to find out how Hans Asperger discovered the syndrome that holds his name, you need to know what exactly Asperger's is. Asperger's syndrome, or AS, is a neurodevelopmental disorder that causes difficulties in social interaction and nonverbal communication. People with Asperger's usually have restricted and repetitive behavior and interests that may seem like obsessions. Although it is under the autism spectrum disorder, ASD, Asperger's differs a lot from other autism diagnoses. Those affected usually have strong verbal and intellectual skills. Asperger's signs usually begin before two years of age, and there is no single treatment. The only available treatments aim at lowering obsessive or repetitive routines and improving communication skills and physical clumsiness. Hans Asperger, doctor, officer, and pioneer. Hans Asperger was born on February 18, 1906 in Hosbrunn, Austria. As a child, Asperger was solitary and was so interested in the poems of Franz Gilparzer that he recited them obsessively to the children and the adults who were around him. By the time he was nine, he had read all of Gilparzer's plays. Oh, and Asperger referred to himself in the third person. Does that sound familiar? During World War II, he was a medical officer serving in the Axis occupation of Yugoslavia. Near the end of the war, Asperger helped open a school for children. Unfortunately, the school was bombed and destroyed and much of Asperger's early work was lost. In 1944, after publishing his landmark paper describing autistic symptoms, Hans Asperger found a permanent tenured post at the University of Vienna. Shortly after the war ended, he became the director of a children's clinic in the city. He was appointed chair of pediatrics at the University of Vienna, which he held for 20 years. He later held a post at Innsbruck. Beginning in 1964, he headed a SOS Kinderdorf in Hinterbrühl. He became Professor Emeritus in 1977 and he died three years later. Asperger's studies. In 1944, Asperger published a paper that for the first time identified a pattern of what he called autistic psychopathy in four young boys. It talked about a lack of empathy, the inability to form friendships, having extremely specialized individual interests, and having clumsy or oafish movements. Asperger observed these qualities and found that some of his patients used their unique traits to transition into successful careers. And Asperger became a recognized doctor. Unfortunately, Asperger passed away before his studies got the recognition they deserved. It was only in 1981 when an English researcher proposed Asperger's syndrome in a paper that it was brought to light again. But in 1991, it gained notoriety after a German-British development psychologist translated Asperger's worse. It led to the inclusion of the condition in the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems, 10th revision, in 1993. And in the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th revision, in 1994. These things happened a half century after Asperger's original research. Although many people criticized Hans Asperger's life, some even claimed he was also affiliated with the Nazi party. His relevance to the DD community is undeniable. Thanks to his early studies and his theory that people with high intelligence can also have autistic traits, he made it possible for people who were once seen as different to be correctly diagnosed and understood for who they are. And now you've come to the end of the video. 
We hope this has helped you understand Asperger's syndrome a little better. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with the people you know who support someone with developmental disabilities. Remember, First Choice Family Services is your information resource for the DSP industry.